put to work on today. I'm going to do the easier one first, and then I'll do the other method. It's a little bit more uh, procedural. So, first of all, you were asked to find a square root of 9, approximate the square root of 9, 9. And if you look at, I listed all the perfect squares, the first 20 or 30 perfect squares. This is square root of 1 is 1, this is 2 times 2, which is 4, 3 times 3, which is 9, 4 times 4, which is 16, which, if you look at it the other way, square root of 25 is 5, square root of 36 is 6, square root of 49 is 7, and so forth. And the square root of 99 lies between these, these two perfect squares, 81 and 100. So let me write square root of 81 here. And square root of 100 over here. Now we know the square root of 81 is 9, so I'm going to put a 9 right on here. And square root of 100 is 10. <clears throat> Step 2 is to put square root of 99 on the top number line. On the top number line, square root of well, 99, well, you obviously know it's going to be very close to 100. So right off the halfway mark, this should be square root of 90, about. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. So square root of 99 is over here, right? Now, if you look at the bottom line, right, that's very close to 10. I'm going to drop a line, this line here, to see where it matches on the bottom number line. So if you drop the line, it would be about here. Now, we, I want you to approximate that particular uh, location. So. On the bottom number line, that's if that's 9, this is 9.5. And that would be pretty close to 10, or about 9, if I were to guess, 9.9. .9. I hope you can say that that's definitely nowhere near close to 9.10, 9.2, 9.3, right? 9.5 is here, so that should be 9.9. .9. At worst, I'd say 9.8. So, the square root of 99, approximately to the nearest tenth, would be 9.9. .9. If you took a moment to take your calculator out and you enter the square root of 99, and I'm going to do that on my phone, uh, if I could see, 99 square root, and if you took the square root of 99 in your calculator, you get 9.9498 dot dot dot. So we were pretty close using this particular math. Okay? Two. Our second question, I'm going to erase these guys, I'm going to leave the perfect squares on top. <clears throat> For the second question, I ask you to find the square, square root of 278. Well, first thing we have to do is look at the perfect squares that we wrote on top and find where is this in between. The square root of 278 is in between square root of 256 and 289. So I'm going to write 256 here. Oops. And over here, I'm going to write square root of 289. Now, square root of 256, we know, okay, it's 16. And the square root of 289, we know also it's 17. So, two square root of 256 and 16 have the same value. Two square root of 289 and 17 have the same value. We are in charge with 278. Well, 256, so let's see if I can do this correctly, 256, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, no, I need to make it a little smaller, 71, 72, 73, no, it has to be a little bit smaller, so 256, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 78, 77, 78, 78, so here's a square root of 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89. So it's about there, right? It's not precise, but it's about there. So what's the next step? We're going to drop a line here. Then you're over there and you dropped a line right here to touch the number line under. So it's somewhere between 16 and 17. Let's just find 16 and a half. 16 and a half would be the halfway mark. If that's 16 and a half, what, do you, what would you guess is that? So that looks like 16.6, let's say 16, 16, 17, 16, 7, 68, maybe 16.6, maybe 16.7. One of those two I would accept. 
So we're going to take a calculator, or I'm going to take a calculator. I'm going to enter square root of 278. And guess what? Square root 278 on the calculator is 16.673332000. Five dot dot dot, and notice that our approximation of 16.6 .6 or 16.7 was really close. Okay, so this is the easier way to find square root, approximate the square root of a number. Okay, so that's one, and then our final number is the square root of 654. So we have to find, approximate the square root of 64. So it's 6, 5, 4. The square root of 64 is between what two perfect squares? It's between 625 and 676. So 625, sorry, here. Square root of 625 and the square root of 676. And square root of 20, 625, you can put in your calculator, comes out a nice pretty number, which is 25. Right? Should be right in the bottom. And square root of 270, 676 is just 26. Right? We have to locate 654. All right. So 654, let's see, 625. Uh, in a second, 625. So this is the halfway mark. If you do 676 minus 625, there's 51 numbers. So I'm going to say that this is about 650. 25, and let's go by 5. 625, 630, 635. Make it a little bit wider. 620, this is square root of 630. Count by 5, 635, square root of 640, square root of 645, square root of 650, square root of 655, square root of 660, square root of 665, square root of 670, and that's square root of 670. So it's okay. So we count by 5 to make my life easier. And now what do we do? From 650, let's find 654. 650. Is that 650 to 655? 654 is right here. Square root of 654. And you drop a line. So it hits the bottom number line. And we got to figure out what number that represents. Well, it's a number between 25 and 26. The halfway mark is about here. So I'd say that 25.5. If that's 25.5, this spot right here looks like 25. Six, seven, eight, nine, maybe twenty-five point six, somewhere around there. Okay, because if this is twenty-five point five, that should be about twenty-five point six, or very, very close. So, if I were to approximate that, I'd say that the square root six fifty-four is about twenty-five point six. Take a calculator. Let's check to see if I'm anywhere close. So, six point fifty-four. Take the square root. And if you look at your calculator. Your answer is going to be 25.5734 dot dot dot. And were we really close? We were, right? For 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 making that very prime, very basic number line here, I might be off by a little bit here on the top, but we were really close. So, if you gave me an answer 25.6 using this method, I would completely take it. Okay, so that's. The first method. The second method, which we'll do much more tomorrow, um, a little more complicated. That's like I said, more steps on. So let's do the first one. square root of 99, and we're gonna do this to three decimal places. So let's get the setup. And remember what I said. We work so it's 99 dot working pairs, right? Instead of one zero, we add two zeros, right? And the first thing we do is we look for, and I, let me list my perfect squares. Um, actually, you know what? Let me do it on the previous page if I already have it. Let me erase that. 
get this guy out of the way. So it looks like division, looks like, with some differences. So let's do square root of 99. Setup is like this. We're going to add a decimal, but instead of adding one zero, we can we, we add we work in pairs. So it's zero zero, zero zero, and zero zero. And each of these numbers is going to have a place value right here on top. Okay. So first thing we look for is what is the biggest perfect square that we that goes into 99. Well, if you look at it, well, one goes, four goes inside, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81. But 100 does not go in because it's too big. So biggest uh, perfect square that we would go in is 81. And instead of 81, the square root of 81 is 9. So we're going to put a 9. And then on top of that, we put here a 9 as well, right? And 9 times 9 is 81. That is okay. That looks like division. Subtract 9 minus 1 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. And when we bring down, we don't bring 1, 0 down, we bring 2. Step 2. We take whatever number that's on top here, and we double it. So the number on top is 9. We double it. So 9 times 2 is 18. And we write 18 over here with an empty place value. So that number right now is 180 something. We got to figure out how many times does 180 something goes into 1,800. Well, and just to um, add on something here, this number and this number are exactly the same. I'll just let's do this by uh, trial and error. So if I decide to put a seven here, I'm going to put a seven here. I then have to multiply 80, 187. 187 times 7 is 1,309. And notice that it's okay, but I, I, I think I can go a little bit higher. So instead of 7, let me erase this. I'm not going to use 7 because I think I can go higher. Let's try 189. So instead of 7, I'm going to put a 9 here and a 9 here. 189 times 9 is 1,701, and that's the highest I can go. So that's what I'm going to use. So 9 times 189 is 1,701. If I subtract that from 1,800, I get 99. And now I bring these two zeros down. Okay, so my number at the bottom is 9,900. What's the next step? Well, take whatever number is on top, which is 99, double it, or multiply by 2, which is 198, and I'm going to write that here. So double, no, 190, sorry, double 99 is 198, and leave an empty place value. So our next number is going to be 1,980-something, right? That's what we're going to use to see how many times that particular number goes into 9,900. Now, you sort of think, well, this number is close to 10,000. This number is close to 2,000. So if I were to take a guess, I would say five times because 2,000 goes into 10,000 five times. So let me try that. If I put a five here, I would put a five here. Let's see if that works. So it's 1,985 times five. 1,985 times five. And we get 9,000. 925. That's pretty close, and that's all I'm going to use. 9,925. We're going to subtract. Oops, actually, that's too much. Apologies. That's 5 is too much. So I'm not going to use that. Instead of a 5, because it was just too much, we're going to use a 4. So now I take 1,984, multiply by 4, and I get. 7,936. That's a 4, by the way. Let's subtract. And I get 1,964. What do I do next? I bring these pair of zeros downstairs. So my number at the bottom, you should read it as 196,400. Okay. What do I do the number on top? We're going to double that number. We're going to double this number here. So 994 times 2 equals... 
1,988, so 1,988, and with a uh, with, uh, with another place value, but leave it empty. So, this number here is very close to 20,000. This number here is very close to 200,000. So, I'd say nine times. <clears throat> I don't know if it's going to work. But we're going to see if nine is enough or too much. 1,988, and I'm going to put that nine here, times nine. 1,988 times nine equals 179, so that's about right. So, the 9 there, which means I put a 9 here, and we are going to multiply, and we already know that's 179,001. Let's subtract, and our remainder is 17,399. We're going to stop here at three place values. Um, you can look at your notes and see if that matches what we did earlier. So the, because we took the square root of 99 before, and the square root of 99 in your calculator, if you look at your calculator, the square root of 99, the calculator should give you 9.9498743 dot 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 are our first three digits here. Exactly the same as the calculator. Look at our first three digits. Yes, they are. So that's we could have continued to find more digits, but that's as far as I want you to go. Pretty cool, isn't it? Maybe. Alright, so that's the first one. And again, it's it takes a little bit, right? So that's why I asked you in class to write the steps that you think you need to remember to continue this. We'll do the second problem. So again, it looks like division in a way, doesn't it? Um, second number, 278. So let's set it up. It's 278. We know we're going to need some decimals, so remember, when we add 0, we add them in pairs, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we're going to put a little spot here because that's where we want to put our digits on top. So, first of all, look at what is the greatest uh, perfect square that can go into 278. Well, 225 goes in, 256 goes in, 288 does not. So, 256 is the biggest perfect square that goes into 278. And what's the square root of 276? The square root of 276 is 16. So, 16 is where I'm going to stop. So, 16 times 16. Okay, I'm going to go 16 times 16. And that's 256, and that's how we start the problem. Subtract, that's a 2, that's a 2, and I now bring two sets of zero. What's our next step? Our next step is to double whatever is on top here. We have 16, we got double 16. If we double 16, we get 32. And what did I ask you to do? Add an extra place value. So now that looks like 320 something. And we got to figure out how many times can 320 something go into 2,200. Well, 300 goes into 2,100 about seven times, and that's what I'm going to try. So I'm going to add a seven here. Remember, if I add a seven here, I must add that same digit on here. So let's try seven. 327 times seven is 2,289. Way too much. So that's not going to work. So it's not seven. It's 6. So 326 times 6, let's see if that works. That's 1,956. And that's what we're going to use. So 1,956. Subtract. 10 minus 6 is 4. 9 minus 5 is 4. 11 minus 9 is 3. And that becomes a 0. What do we do next? We bring these two zeros now. Next step is to double whatever is on top here. So we have 166. We're going to multiply by 2. We get 332. And add up empty place value. So whatever number goes in here will also go in here. So try to guess. Estimate. I'm sorry. That's 35,000. This is 33. <coughs> uh oh, wait, sorry. Let me just go back a step. I think I 2,289, 
326 times 6 equals 1,956. Um, in the second. So now we are going to try, and I'm going to guess that this number might be a 7, which means this number is a 7. Let's multiply that. 3,327 times 7. Let's see if that's close enough. 23,000. Okay, something's wrong here. <coughs> oh, I see what's wrong. I subtracted incorrectly. Sorry, guys. Let me go back. Subtract again. Okay, so my subtraction was wrong. It's 244. How did I miss 2200 minus 1956 is 244. So I made a major mistake here. So this is 244. All right, apologies. So again, 16, 166 on top gets doubled. I get 332. Put a place value here. Oh, I forgot to bring these two zeros down. So now the bottom number is 24,400, and this is 3,320 something. Um, 7 looks like a good number. Let's multiply. 3,327 times 7. Let's see if that gets me close enough. That gets me to 23,289. That's pretty close. So 7 is okay. So 23,289. Subtract. That's going to give me 1,111. Okay. What do we do next? We bring the next set of zeros down. And the next step over here is to double the number on top. So 1,667 times 2 equals 3,334 replace value. So that is a number 33,340 something and this number here is 100 and 11,100 and that looks like a 3 to me because 4 is too much. So if I multiply those two, sorry I forgot to put a 3 here, so 3,343 times 3 Three, 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 forty-three times three is going to give us a hundred thousand and twenty-nine. If I subtract, I find leftover eleven thousand zero seventy-one. And again, we can continue, but I'm quite happy with that. Let's take the square root to see how close we got. Not close. We should be exactly like that. And if you take the square root of 278, your calculator is going to start with 16.673-33200, but notice our first three digits to the right of the decimal is exactly the same, so we are good. Last problem, hopefully, and again, please take notes, write your steps, right? Last problem is take this, find the square root to three decimal places to the thousandth place value of 654. Set it up. 654, decimal, the zero comes in pairs. All right, what's the greatest perfect square that fits in 654? It's not 625, but six, actually it's 625. And the square root of 625 is 25, so that's what we're going to use. So 25 times 25 is 625. If you subtract 625, uh -oh. oh no, my battery. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't move. Please, 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 please. Oh, no. oh, yeah.
yes. Okay, it's working. Right. Save by the bell. Sorry. So let's subtract this. And if we subtract 14 minus 5 is 9, and that's 4 minus 2 is 2. What's our next step? Bring these two zeros down. A step after that, take whatever is on top here, double it. So we have 25, double 25 is 50. And we put an extra place value. So that's 500 and something. 500 and something goes into 2,900 how many times? Well, it's about five times. So we're going to take five. So I'm going to put a five over here and make sure that you put also five. These two numbers always match. So 505 times five. 505 times 5 is 2,525. That's what we're going to use, because 6 is too much. We're going to subtract. And if you subtract, we get 375. Our next step, bring these two zeros down. And then on top, we have 255. We're going to double it. If we double it, we get 510. And an extra place value. So that number is 500, sorry, 5,100 and something. How many times that goes into 37,500? I'm going to say seven times. Might be wrong, but I'm going to give it a shot. So that's a seven. This is also seven. So let's multiply 5,107 times seven. Seven times seven. It's going to be 49, seven, 35. So it gets us pretty close. Um, 35,749, let's subtract, and we get 1,751, what's our next step, bring the next two sets of zero down, and now we take whatever's on top, 2,557, we're going to double that, so over here we write 5,114, it's an empty place value. That's a number, well, if you look at that number, it's 51,140 something, and this number is 175,100, so it's definitely three times. Put a three over here. So 5,100, so 51,143 times three, it's going to get us 153,429. I'm going to subtract. Leftover is going to be 21,671. We could continue, but we're not. I'm just asking you to go this far. Now double check. If you type in square root of 654, let's see what your calculator says. So 654, take the square root. Your calculator spews out 25.5734233. Notice that these three digits, the first three digits to the right of the decimal, are exactly the same. So we just found the square root of 654 to the thousandth place. <coughs> and that's it. It's not that complicated, but it takes a little practice.